ASTM C231 is the standard test method for air content of freshly mixed concrete by the pressure method. This procedure helps the user determine the air content of freshly mixed concrete by observing a change in volume with a change in pressure. To perform this test, we will need the meter itself. There are two types of meters that employ the principles of Boyle's Law. They are the Type A meter and the Type B meter. Both are considered to be of satisfactory design. The minimum bowl capacity of any meter is 0.2 cubic feet. Furthermore, it must also have a minimum diameter equal to 0.75 to 1.25 times the height of the bowl. For the purposes of this training video, we will be using a Type B meter, whose cover assembly consists of air valves, air bleeder valves, pet cocks, and a dial gauge. Other necessary equipment will include a tamping rod or a vibrator. If using a tamping rod, it must have a diameter of 5 eighths of an inch. It must have a length at least 4 inches greater than the depth of the bowl, but not more than 24 inches in overall length. And finally, at least one end of the tamping rod, the tamping end, shall be rounded to a hemispherical tip of the same diameter. If using an internal vibrator, its specifications are described in ASTM C192. However, it does state that the diameter of the vibrating element shall be at least three quarters of an inch, but not more than one and a half inches. Furthermore, it shall have a frequency of 9,000 vibrations per minute. Also, the combined length of the vibrating shaft and the vibrating element shall exceed the depth of the concrete section being vibrated by at least 3 inches. Lastly, the frequency of the vibrator shall be checked in accordance with manufacturer's recommendations, or at least every two years with a reed vibrating tachometer or other suitable device. Whether rotting or vibrating, we'll need a mallet. Our mallet shall have a rubber or rawhide head, and for measuring bowls less than one half cubic foot, the mallet shall weigh 1.25 plus or minus one half pounds. If our measuring bowl is larger than one half cubic foot, then the weight of the mallet increases to 2.25 pounds plus or minus one half pound. We're also going to need a strike-off bar or strike-off plate. If using a strike-off bar, the strike-off bar must be made of metal. Plastic strike-off bars are not permitted in this test. The strike-off bar must be one-eighth of an inch thick, three-quarters of an inch wide, and 12 inches in length. If using a strike-off plate, metal, glass, and acrylic strike-off plates are permitted. If using a metal strike-off plate, then it must be at least one-quarter inch thick. If using a glass or acrylic strike-off plate, then it must be at least one-half inch thick and the length and width of any strike-off plate must be at least two inches greater than the diameter of the bowl. We'll also need a syringe or water bottle for squirting water into the petcocks. We'll need an additional measure for holding water. A field favorite is always a plastic cylinder mold. We may need a one and a half inch sieve. We'll discuss this in a moment. And of course, we'll need a scoop. This test method is applicable to any concretes made with relatively dense aggregates and is not applicable to concretes made with lightweight aggregates, air-cooled blast furnace slag, or any other type of highly porous aggregate. Now, if the concrete contains any aggregate which is larger than 2 inches, the sample must be wet sieved over the aforementioned 1.5 inch sieve. Now, before we even begin our test, we must determine the aggregate correction factor. The aggregate correction factor procedure can be found in Section 6 of ASTM C231. And note, the aggregate correction factor does vary with different types of aggregates, since it is widely believed that the aggregate correction factor is not directly related to the absorption of the aggregate it can only be determined 
by this procedure. Also, before beginning our test, we're going to have to determine which consolidation method we're going to be using. In most cases, our consolidation method will be determined by the slump of the concrete. As an example, if the slump of the concrete is greater than 3 inches, then the sample must be rotted. When rotting, we want to fill the bowl in three equal layers and rod each layer 25 times. If the slump of the concrete is less than 1 inch, then the sample must be vibrated. When vibrating, we want to fill the bowl in two equal layers and insert the vibrator at three different locations. When vibrating, make every effort to be as consistent as possible in regards to the duration of the insertion of the vibrator. Under normal circumstances, it can be assumed that sufficient vibration has taken place when the surface of the concrete is smooth and glazed. Be sure not to over-vibrate the concrete as this may cause segregation and loss of intentionally entrained air. And finally, we never want to vibrate so long as to cause escape of froth from the sample. And if perchance the slump of the concrete is between 1 and 3 inches, either rotting or vibration is acceptable. Now that we have an understanding of the equipment and limitations of ASTM C231, let's go through a detailed performance review. In this review, we're going to be using a Type B meter, and since the slump of the concrete was 5 inches, we're going to be using the rotting procedure. First, we want to obtain our sample in accordance with ASTM C172 standard practice for sampling freshly mixed concrete. And if there is any aggregate larger than 2 inches, we're going to sieve our sample over the 1.5 inch sieve. Now, clean and dampen the bowl. We can now add the first layer of concrete filling the bowl to approximately a third of its volume. Be sure to move the scoop around the outside perimeter of the bowl for even distribution. We can rod this layer 25 times throughout its depth without forcibly striking the base of the bowl. Then tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. We can now add the second layer of concrete filling the bowl to approximately two-thirds its volume. Then, taking care to penetrate the previous layer by approximately 1 inch, we can rod this layer 25 times. And, once again, tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 times. We can now add the third layer of concrete and repeat the rotting and tapping procedure. Note that after tapping the third layer, but before striking off, a small quantity of representative concrete can be added or removed to compensate for a slight deficiency or excess in the concrete. However, one eighth of an inch above the rim of the bowl is considered the optimum. When striking off the excess concrete, we want to press the plate on the top surface of the bowl covering approximately two-thirds of the bowl. In a sawing motion, we want to withdraw the plate to finish only the area which we covered. Now, cover the original two-thirds of the surface and then, with vertical pressure on the plate, in a sawing motion, advance the plate off the bowl. To finish off striking off with a plate, we want to incline the plate and strike several sweeps with the edge of the plate to produce a smooth finish. We can now clean and dampen the rim, flange, and cover assembly. Now attach the cover assembly to the bowl. Close the main air valve and open the petcocks. Next, we want to inject water into one petcock until it exits the other. Now, close the main bleeder valve and pump the dial to the initial pressure. For this meter, the initial pressure is minus 3. Stabilize the gauge by hand, bleeder valve, or pump. Once we've stabilized the gauge at the initial pressure, we want to close both petcocks and open the main air valve. 
With the main air valve still open, tap the side of the bowl sharply and stabilize the gauge by hand. After stabilizing, read the gauge. We now want to cover the petcocks with our hand and release the pressure. Lastly, we want to report our air content to the nearest 0.1% after subtracting the aggregate correction factor. And this is the equation for calculating the air content by the pressure method. A subscript S equals A subscript 1 minus G, where A subscript S is the air content of the sample tested in percent, A subscript 1 is the apparent air content of the sample tested, this is the percent read on dial gauge, and G is the aggregate correction factor. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude ASTM C231, Standard Test Method for Air Content of Freshly Mixed Concrete by the Pressure Method.